Hey everybody, it's me, Sheesh. And before we begin, I just want to give a quick thank you to everybody listening, watching, and supporting the podcast. It means the world to us, and we're so appreciative. I just want to let you guys know that you guys can always ask us questions, give us segment ideas, and keep up with the fun, all at ashishandfriends.com. We're on Twitter at ashishandpals, we're on Instagram at ashishandfriends, and hey, we're even on Facebook, facebook.com slash ashishandfriendspod. If you're watching this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. All that following and liking and subscribing will help us grow and keep going, so we appreciate it so much. And once again, thank you, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome to another great episode of the Sheesh and Friends podcast. As always, I'm your host, Ashish, and we've got a full house today. We've got Shahan at Shahan J. Raja on Instagram and Twitter. We've got Dev at Supaleza, and we've got Ryan. Uh, you can always reach me at Ashish Airy on Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, you can follow along with the fun at ashishandfriends.com. We put up the polls on Twitter and Instagram at Ashish and Friends on Instagram, Ashish and Pals on Twitter. And uh, why don't you just like us on Facebook too? Uh, Facebook.com slash Ashish and Friends pod. So today we've got another great episode. It's a draft episode. Whoa. Wow. That's crazy. Mind blower right there. Uh, <laughs> it's a great idea that came up uh, that Sean, uh, Ryan actually gave to me. Uh, we're going to do stand up comedians. And uh, so this is going to be a four round draft. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see where this goes because I kind of know what some people like. Um, but I also don't know some of the things they like. So uh, I don't know where this will go. Uh, we came up with good boards, I think. Uh, it'll be a fun draft. So thank you again for tuning in. And without further ado, let's get started. Um, speaking of ideas, if you have an idea, please hit us up and give it to us. So just yeah, add us yeah. on Twitter, send us a DM on Instagram if you have an idea, hit us up on Facebook. And we'll do your draft idea. Yeah, and I'll uh, mention that later in the outro, too. But there you go. Uh, yeah, if you have any ideas, just let us know. And uh, with this said, uh, I don't think there's a huge... Uh, I'm not I'm not really wanting the number one spot. I think I want to be in that 3-4 range, to be honest. Just because I know Agreed. Dev... I just know Shahan and Dev have similar tastes as me. So I think being in that 3-4 range, I could at least take the two I think we have similar interests in. But, okay. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we've got a we've got an interesting uh, order right here. So with the number four pick, speak into existence. You got your boy Ashish here picking. Number three, you've got Shahan picking. And uh, at number two, you've got Ryan, which means Dev has the number one pick overall. So Dev, go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay, cool. I was actually excited to get the number one pick because I have no idea where you guys are going to go, and I want my number one comedian. I'm not that big into comedy, but this is the one comedian, if I see their name pop up, I will immediately watch the show, and that's Dave Chappelle. So you have the Chappelle show, everything that goes along with it. I love his Netflix specials. That, to me, is the number one comedian. Yeah, uh, for me, I haven't seen like all of his stuff, so that's why I wasn't going to draft him. I know I, I have enjoyed his stuff that I have seen, but he's definitely one of the top-tier uh, stand-up comedians of all time, so that was a good pick. Yeah, it's a pretty obvious pick, I think. Um, I, I got to say, I don't feel like Dave Chappelle's stuff has aged super well for me personally. But like, you, you know, I mean, I obviously his show is, is top tier and obviously the sketches that he does. And I mean, you know, you really go back. I mean, I think that he was obviously one of the leading voices in stand-up comedy. But uh, yeah, I, I think for well, a number a one. A true innovator was, to me for stand-up stand comedy. So Yeah, yeah I'd agree. Hmm. All right, well, Ryan, you've got the number two pick. What do you got for us? Well, everybody predicts my pick. It's going to be Jerry Seinfeld, the number two. I think he's an iconic comedian. He's got the, have you noticed? Did you know? What's up with this? He's, he's great. He's funny. He's relatable. And he's clean. And I just want to give a shout out. I just heard that Jerry Stiller passed away. He made the Seinfeld show iconic. So... Rip to Jerry Stiller and thank you for the laughs that you gave. But Jerry Seinfeld is my second pick or my first pick. Yeah, um, I personally haven't watched too much Seinfeld. I think we've discussed this in the TV show podcast. Um, I know his stand up is pretty good, but yeah, I've watched comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, which I really enjoy, where he actually interviews like other good comedians. So that really helped helped me out in this draft. But yeah. From what I understand, Jerry Seinfeld is really respected by other comedians. A lot of other comedians consider him like a true goat. So I think it's a great pick. 
What's the deal with this pick? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, you got the number three pick overall. Yeah, what, yeah. What we got? I'm, I'm a little worried here. I won't lie. All right. Well, to me, I think that if there's one comic right now who just stands far above the rest of the field, this is a modern comic. This is a guy who's putting out content right now. Um, I love it. Like, like Ryan said, I mean, for me, Finding a comic that's both funny but also pretty clean, I think, is really something that I look at. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like listening to vulgar stuff, too. But, like, I think it's harder and more interesting to, to write jokes that aren't just dirty jokes, that aren't just necessarily that it's, sort of stuff. It's, def it's definitely an art to do that. Yeah, it, and I think it's hard because you, you are trying to appeal to different audiences when you do that. And I think that this comedian does it better than anybody. John Mulaney. John Mulaney, to me, is the best comic going right now at this moment. I think that, you know, everything that he puts out is, is must watch. Like, I think that just his style, the way that he delivers on stage, I mean, he's just got a great sort of, uh, you know, command of, of what he's trying to say, the message he's trying to give the stories he's trying to tell. Uh, and again, I mean, I think that he is a great representation of what I feel like current comedy, like where it can go, because I think that right now, Comedy is in kind of a weird place, right? Because we're used to sort of the last 20 years, last 50 years, whenever you're just kind of saying shit. And like John Mulaney to me, like he's insightful. He's, uh, you know, I think that he says stuff about society and, and politics and that sort of stuff without being political, without being any of that sort of stuff. I think that his, his comedy is really something that, that people, no matter who you are, can maybe appreciate. And, and for me, I mean, I think... John Mulaney's an obvious number one big. First of all, I think he's actually not even just now. Like in the past few years, I've always heard him. I kind of have something going on Pandora with comedians, and he's definitely one of them. Uh, I think he's an amazing writer for a lot of uh, you know shows, SNL especially. You you see his uh, name up there. He actually came out with a show named Mulaney. Um, I didn't like it because he just kind of repeated the same jokes I knew about. But yeah, very great comedian for sure. Where can you check out his stuff? Like currently, yeah. if we wanted to see a stand up. Yeah, he has, uh, I think he has three Netflix specials, which is the primary uh, primary okay. way that I started watching him. And then he also obviously has some stuff on YouTube as well. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I have not watched him before, so I'll check him out after this. Yeah, he, he's just really funny. I mean, again, he's like a guy in his mid-30s who, you know, so he's kind of got some of that comedy about, like, really becoming an adult and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I mean... J it's very relatable comedy, I feel like, and and I just think that he's, you know, for me, I mean, one of the things is, like, you know, my wife doesn't like all the vulgar stuff, for example. Like, he's one of the ones that I can sit down and not feel like I have to, like, be on edge a little bit, like, uh, is he going <laughs> to say something bullshit that I'm going to hate? Like, I never have to worry about that with John Mulaney, but he still is so funny. Um, yeah, and uh, like uh, Sean mentioned, he does have a Netflix special, a couple of them out there. He has one with uh, Nick Kroll, and they actually have a podcast together during this quarantine period, so check that out. Yeah. And he's actually um, one of the uh, the leads of Big Mouth, the show with Nick Kroll. So. Yes, 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 yeah. And uh, so you can see Ryan and Shahan, they like the clean comedy. Uh, if you shower, just hit them up. They'll probably start liking you. Um, for me, I'm just going to go in the opposite total direction. So right here, I'm going to take... Kind of controversial picks, but I'm gonna take Louis C.K. Oh wow, with my first over with my first pick. Uh, <laughs> first, pick. He's actually, oh man, <laughs> with my first pick because I think he's a top five comedian to be honest of like all time for me, and he's someone I've listened to a lot too. Uh, obviously not recently because you know stuff, but uh, I, I think he's really funny and uh, he always makes me laugh. His show was really good, and uh, with my second pick, I'm gonna be. Well, let me just jump in and say on on Louis real quick. I mean, obviously what's happened happened we're not gonna you know go into that yes. but i mean before before all of that i mean he definitely was one of the guys that i really liked listening to i mean again i think that he he is really good at delivery and kind of finding sort of anecdotes that really relate with people and and you know i mean obviously yes he is more dirty per se than some of the other guys but it's not just like oh i'm just saying shit and you're you know you're just so offended by all of it you know he, he really i think uh, is insightful at the same time Right, right. I appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, but yeah, so with my with my second pick, um, I'm gonna have to go with Aziz Ansari. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, someone I was worried Shahan would take for sure around this area. So I was glad to have these back to back picks. Um, but yeah, I love watching his specials. You know, I used to listen to him a lot back in the day. And I mean, he came out with the uh, special on Netflix just a year ago. I really enjoyed that one too. But just overall, growing up, that's one of the ones I definitely you know had in. Uh, in the rotation I'll, I'll probably name i'll probably get all the four or five that i really listen to the most so um but yeah th those two lucy k aziz and sorry i'm glad i got those two 
definitely two I really listened to. You know, I told Shahan once they're actually both on Parks and Rec at the same time, so that was kind of weird to watch later on. With uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Rob Lowe, for that matter. I don't know how he just keeps just not getting brought up. With all if you that. haven't seen that, watch the comedy roast of Rob Lowe. It's uh, pretty hilarious. <laughs> they go pretty brutal. All right. Well, Shahan, you're back on the board. What are you, what are you going? Yeah. Uh, so... Aziz was definitely one that I considered. Uh, I I think that for me, Louis C.K. was off my board. I think that his stuff was too much for me. But, you know, the Aziz stuff, I think I could still get past. That doesn't sound good, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, I'm going to go with another uh, pretty clean comic. I mean, again, I'm not... I'm not saying that all I listen to is clean comedy, right? But I think that the guys who can do it well do it, it really well. And I'm going to go back to the well of where I went with my uh, with my YouTube one. I'm going to go to Hassan Minaj. Hassan Minaj uh, does, a, I think, a great job of, you know, blending sort of the political stuff, the societal stuff with being really, really funny, being really, really insightful. Obviously, I mean, I think he does a great job of, of sort of uh, making humor about, like, brown families and stuff like that. I, th- I think he's a really high-level comedian. Um, you know, and and obviously, you know, his most well-known sort of stand-up show was kind of a one-act play to uh, Homecoming King. You know, that sort of skirts the line between stand-up and obviously one-act play. But, I mean, it is fucking phenomenal. It is it is yeah. amazing. You know, I it's think, one of the best things I've ever watched. I think with Hassan, Hassan Minaj, too, for all of us being uh, from immigrant families growing up in the U.S., he's just so relatable yeah. for us personally. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and it's kind of cool, too, because... You know, he obviously, like you said, grew up in an immigrant family, but he's also still like very Western. He's still very, you know, and so like I think just like that, us, like, right? You know, just like yeah. us, right? And I think that that's the thing, right? Is like it, there aren't many people who speak to our experience, and I think the thing is too, like I have been curious: is this just something that because it's us, you know, maybe we relate to it more? But when I talk to other people about him too, they all think he's fantastic too. Which mm-hmm. you know, I think the ability to to take a message like that, especially like again, Homecoming King to me, like I think I said at the time, it's the best thing I've ever watched on Netflix. Now, I mean, there's other things too that have ever uh, been on Netflix, but it's it's top five it, for me. And it is my and favorite that, stand-up special on Netflix, bar none. Yeah, I, I think it's just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I actually got a chance to see him perform live. Uh, like a year ago we were actually actually we were planning to go again because he was coming to T- toyota Mus- music factory close to our to my place uh and obviously you know the, the world is shut down but uh <laughs> but he is he is absolutely i mean he is phenomenal absolutely phenomenal yeah uh first of all thanks for the invite shahan uh secondly yeah we discussed in depth about uh homecoming king i really enjoyed it too and a lot of people i talked to enjoyed it so if you haven't checked it out you've been sleeping for a long time uh please go check that out but yeah uh, the Patriot Act, another great thing he's doing. So yeah, I really loved him. I had him written down as someone you would take. So I'm glad I'm two for two with uh, Aziz easy, and Hassan in your decision. list. So <laughs> okay, well uh, Ryan, that puts you back up. What do you got for us, buddy? For my second pick, I'm taking Jim Gaffigan. No, dude. What? 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 No, what? dude. Bro, why'd you do that to me? <laughs> oh, Ooh, I did. I did not see that coming. And now he's okay. Are you there, Ryan? I think you were frozen for a second. <laughs> I froze. Why are you so shocked? Dude, I had him next on my list. He's someone I grew up with. He was one of the four that I really wanted. I'm really blown away that you took him here. You, first of all, Sheesh, I think that you should have definitely dude, waited on what? CK. I don't think any of us would have taken him. <laughs> I'm just really, I'm very sad right now. But all right, go ahead, Ryan. Tell us why you enjoyed so, him. I love Jim Gaffigan. I think he has a lot of relatable comedy. He's, again, very clean, which is hard to do in the comedy world. I think he clearly cares about his family. He does a lot of comedy with his family. He takes his family on tour. And and lastly, I love I love the little impressions he does, even though he's not that great at impressions. He does all those, like, random impressions. I think he does, like, the audience member. Oh, Jim, I can't believe you said that. Right. Like I love all those things. <laughs> and my favorite sketch was a bowling one. Have you seen that? Um, probably, dude. Dude, I love Jim Gaffigan. And like you said, the audience member one was like, "Wow, Jim's so fat today. He looks like a whale." You know, that's <laughs> hilarious. I love that stuff. And well, I, my favorite was when he trashed Subway so badly. He's like, "Oh yeah, right. yeah, my ass." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, Jim Gaffigan. I was one telling of my that favorites. to my brother like, last night. He's like, "You want some mayonnaise?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, Subway, eat fresh. <laughs> Dude, love Jim Gaffigan. 
very, very tragic you took him here, but I love the pick. Good job. <laughs> and uh, Dev, have you ever seen well, Jim Gaffigan? I, I have not, but Dude, definitely please, another person please. I'm going to add to my list to check out. I'm not, so, so with me, when it comes to comedy, I really only check out what has been sent to me. I'm not really someone who searches out for new comedy or comedy shows. So uh, my list is probably very different than others just because I only really see what, what has been sent to me. <laughs> And speaking of my list, actually, I really expected Ryan to take this to take this pick. Um, and if he had, one through seven on my board would have been gone. So actually, everyone would have been taking all of my picks at that point. But since Ryan left him on the board, I'm going to take him, and that's Russell Peters. <laughs> so uh, Russell Peters, to me, when I think of middle school and comedy, he's the first name that comes to my mind. So he had so many classic sketches that we really shared in our circles in middle school. I mean, you could have walked into any classroom and said any part of one of his sketches and almost everyone would have known what you were talking about. And so that's really like the iconic level that Russell Peters hit for our community. So I, I love Russell Peters. That's, that's pretty much all I got to say about him. I think he's awesome. What do you guys think? Yeah, he's hilarious. Somebody's <laughs> going to get a hood. Somebody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like you. Oh, go ahead, John. Yeah, Russell Peters, or as I call him, worse than Hassan Minaj. Uh, the original <laughs> Hassan Minaj, probably yes, the original. And, for uh, sure. <laughs> he's he's um, really. Yeah. I just love how great he is at like interacting with the audience and making jokes about the audience. He's really good at that. I just that that what that's what's ma makes me feel most uncomfortable. It's just like these people paid to see him. He's just like <laughs> roasting these people in the front row. And he's just like, damn. And uh, actually, you know, my parents actually have front row tickets to see Russell because my brother bought them once. But anyways, I love Russell. Did they get Ryan uh, shh. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a story for a different day. Um, but yeah, me and Ryan grew up, you know, middle school, high school, and even today we still talk about Russell Peters' jokes. So. That was a good pick, Dev. Um, glad you took it there. Well, uh, you have back-to-back -back picks, actually, right? Yep. yep. So I'm going to go with my next pick. Um, I, if, you, if you know anything about me, I've actually only been to two comedy shows live. The first one is Dave Chappelle. The second one is Kevin Hart. So I'm going to take Kevin Hart here. So Kevin Hart is, like, without a doubt, the most successful comedian when it com comes to making money. Like, no, no comedian has really made as much money as Kevin Hart. So he's, he really has taken his brand and elevated to that next level. Uh, you know, like Dave, like Dave Chappelle makes a joke in one of his shows that Kevin Hart has shut the fuck up money. Where, so like Dave Chappelle has like, please be quiet money. He's got shut the fuck up money. And I love Kevin Hart. I think he's hilarious. Um, so I'm going to take him. Yeah, I, I think that one thing too about Kevin Hart is that I think he gets a bad rap because he shows up in so many movies and like i mean his acting style maybe is like a little typecast at this point but like the dude is really funny right like like the dude has the goods it's like i think that sometimes people just think like uh another kevin hart movie you know like that mm -hmm. just because of that you know he doesn't have like sort of that quality but i think that you know especially watching his stand-up i've seen a couple of his specials like i mean it's still really really good even though obviously it's kind of everywhere now yeah, I think he has that personality that just makes him funny. He's just like a, he's not, I think he's just naturally a funny guy. That's the way he does stand up. It's just even funnier. Yeah, his he's, charisma is just, is just undeniable, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, for sure. you don't make what he's made happen happen <laughs> if, you, if you don't have it, you know, like, like you don't get to be not funny and have all that. And I think that he definitely lives up to it. For sure. For sure. All right. Well, Ryan, uh, what, what do you got for us? I'm, I'm a little worried now. So for my third pick, uh, I'm going to an older com com comedian. Mm -hmm. and he's iconic. I'm going with Rodney Dangerfield. That's my third, my third <laughs> pick. I, I just, I love that guy. He's just, he's hilarious. He's, he's a one-liner. So all his jokes are one-line jokes. And he's rapid fire. And they're all hilarious. He's a great writer. He just can make you laugh, 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 laugh. He's every joke. My favorite one is... My doctor told me to take sleeping pills first thing in the morning. Sorry, that wasn't a good execution. But... <laughs> I feel like you could have chosen a better one. <laughs> well, we all laughed. The silence so... was funnier. The silence was funnier. <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen, if I have, uh, if I had to describe uh, what you just picked there, I'd, I'd have to say I give it no respect. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, so I actually only know that line that Sean said from Parks and Rec. <laughs> I, don't, I have not ever actually seen the Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield, but they made a joke about that impersonation on Parks and Rec, so... Right, right. You're exactly right. I have not seen any of Rodney Dangerfield. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> so. That's an iconic fly. Like, a lot of the shows, I get no respect. <laughs> All right. Well, Sean, you're back up. This is pretty hard. I mean, I, I've got a lot of names still left on my list. Uh, yeah, so so I guess you, you look at the first two again, sort of political, sort of societal commentary, pretty clean. You know what? I'm going to go kind of the opposite direction with that, okay? I'm going to go with Chris Rock. Chris Rock, one of the classics, one of the greats, uh, you know, really one of the, I don't want to say one of the first, like, real observational humor guys, but, you know, he kind of took that sort of role to another level. It's just a fantastic voice. I mean, that's just one of those guys who, obviously, his voice just also takes it to another level in the delivery. He's also kind of managed to take all of this and turn it into a giant empire, too, which I think mm-hmm. is great. Um, you know, I, I think that he's really just the whole package, and and I can't believe that uh, that we're still picking up Chris Rock in the third round. Yeah, his show is hilarious, right? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I love that show. Can you do a impersonation of his voice, Shahan? I cannot. Oh. <laughs> and listen, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to end up on Ashish's list. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> that's messed up. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> this is just messed up. You get stuck. Uh, hey, hey, Dev, you talking about everybody hates Chris? Yeah, that's okay. what I was talking about. Sure. I was like, did he have a new show come out? But yeah, yeah that's kind of where I know him from. Like, exactly. I didn't watch too much stand-up from him, but yeah, that show's classic. And that, well, that and, yeah, background and his, noise, you know. His voice and narration style is just... I mean, I think that really is the thing that makes the show. For sure, mm-hmm. for sure. That's a good pick. Um, so what? That puts me back up on board? Woohoo! What kind of danger am I getting in? Uh, no, right here... I'm very, like I said, I'm very sad. You know, Jim Gaffigan right here would have been, like, the best thing. I'm, I'm just... This draft's done. Uh, I'm just going to take uh, someone I listen to a lot in the rotation, um, Dimitri Martin. You might not have heard of him. Check him out. I think he's hilarious. Uh, his wordplay is spectacular. And uh, he also plays music while uh, making jokes. So I think he has a Netflix special out or a movie as well on there. So check it out. But yeah, Dimitri Martin, someone I really like. Not mm-hmm. much to say there. You guys probably haven't heard of him. Nope. Um, so... <laughs> but that's impressive he plays music too yeah he plays a guitar plays and just guitar destroys everyone yeah yeah does it's, he do like fantastic. songs does he do like yeah, songs? yeah 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 sometimes he'll sing songs and uh you know it'll be funny i'll send you guys some links all right guys um <laughs> and with my last pick i'm gonna have to go with chris delia um some more recent uh i kind of like his comedy he had a tv show at some point it's pretty good uh i first found him like especially on like justin bieber's roast I was like, what? What is this guy doing here? Uh, but yeah, he has some good comedy and uh, a lot of Netflix specials. So check those out. And yeah, that wraps up my list. Um, you guys have anything to say about Chris D'Elia or uh, Dimitri Martin? <laughs> Uh, Chris Lee is fine. I mean, he, I don't know. He he's not how most. You know, it's it's funny. Like you said, I mean, I I kind of came to know about Chris D'Elia because he was like tied with Justin Bieber a lot, <laughs> which is a bad introduction when you know when obviously Justin Bieber's coming up and we're all like sixteen. But uh, no, I mean, he, he's definitely funny, but uh, but not one that I've watched a whole lot of his stuff. Fun uh, fact for the listeners out there: Justin Bieber, Ashish, and I all share a birthday. That is true. And another fun <laughs> fact. Chris D'Elia has a uh, song credit on Logic's and Eminem song, Homicide. So, woo! <laughs> well, Sean, fourth round pick. Yeah, Let's well, uh, well, well, Chris Rock's on, on freaking My, uh, my Beautiful Dark Twisted <laughs> Fantasy. Dark Twisted Fantasy, yeah. exactly. Which, which, song? which song, Sean? Which song, uh, Sean? It's Blame Game, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So, you look at our list, right? We've got, uh, we got t- 13 names off the board. Uh, what I'm noticing about this list is that it is very testosterone field, right? Oh so, no, you're gonna take my pick. I I don't know. I mean, there's a couple different directions I could go here, but uh, but I'm going to go with uh with Chelsea Peretti. Chelsea Peretti, yeah, I don't know which direction you're gonna go. I'm curious now, but um, but Chelsea <laughs> Peretti, obviously, you know, very well known for the show Brooklyn Nine Nine as well. She's been sort of a background character in a lot of shows, and her stand-up's really funny. She's just got like a whole sort of sarcastic vibe to her, like, and to me, like, I I think that. You know, a lot of the sort of female comedians that have become biggest, I don't always love because they're 
oftentimes very vulgar and like very like aggressive and and like i i mean again like i don't want to i don't want to watch amy schumer right like that, that's not really my thing um but you know for me chelsea peretti is just you know a little bit more sarcastic a little bit more laid back a little bit more casual and i think that she's a lot of fun okay yeah that's, that's a great pick <laughs> that's how i felt with my last two picks so uh like you said i've actually seen some of her stuff and it's really good and like you said it's pretty clean and um yeah i think a lot of people know her from brooklyn 99 and you get a, like a lot of those kind of good vibes she, whenever she's she, amazing in brooklyn 99 yeah but she's also appeared on like other tv shows and movies yeah. and stuff and you always see her and enjoy and, her. and the other uh the other fun fact about her is that she is mrs jordan peele oh, oh interesting. never knew oh. that didn't yeah. know that. So actually, I, I actually get the movie Get Out with it, too. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, all right. Uh, Ryan, that puts you up. Last pick. What do you got for us? Well, if you know me somewhat well, you would not pick this comedian, but I know nobody would have picked it, so I left it for the fourth round. I'm picking Maj Jobrani. Oh. He's a fellow Iranian. I, I relate to his comedy because he does a lot of Iranian-related comedy and like a Persian accent. So it's just hilarious to me. He has good, relatable comedy for me. So I just, I like him for that reason. Yeah, uh, I've actually heard some of his stuff because I was listening to a lot of stand-up comedy at some point. Uh, he's pretty good. He does a horrible Indian impression, though, and that really pissed yeah. me off. So I could he never listen good. to him again. His wife is Indian. That. His wife is Indian. Oh, I actually didn't know that. I, mean, I was very insane, I guess. I don't know. I yeah. still can't do an Indian accent. But, no, but when I heard but, it, I was very insulted. Not, it's not a good I accent. Done. I was done with it. He appears on one episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm too, though. But yeah, I, I like his comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying, what you're yeah. saying is his Indian accent doesn't compare to Russell Peters. So I got the best Indian accent on the board. That's the probably, only probably that, that's the only comedy show I went to live. Macho Brani. Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's a good one for sure. Uh, like I said, haven't heard too much of him. I did listen to him quite a bit until that Indian bit. But yeah, good pick. <laughs> I think you ran it up. So, nice so the one that Ashish has canceled is that one. <laughs> yeah, he's for sure canceled for me, dude. I was so insulted to listen to that. I'm like, what is this? Uh, anyways, you have Jim Gaffigan, so I really love your board, Ryan. <laughs> and uh, right. yeah, last pick, what do you got? So I was actually going to take Amy Schremer, but Shahan actually convinced me to go a different direction <laughs> because you you mentioned vulgar comedians, and I have three of them. So I need a non-vulgar comedian <laughs> with my last pick. And I'm going to also take a woman who I love and isn't known as much for her stand-up, though she does have a new Netflix special. But I'm going to take Ellen DeGeneres. I think Ellen DeGeneres is just an awesome personality, great person. Uh, it was not originally what I had planned to surprise everyone with with my last pick, but with her still on the board. And uh, I just think she's an awesome person. And her, her comedy is very non-vulgar, very... Anyone could play it. You could put it on in front of anyone. And she's great. So I think Ellen DeGeneres really rounds out my board. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad that she went with her instead of Amy Schumer. I, I, I just, I don't know, man. It's, I, I don't know what it is. I, I just can't really get into sort of the, the super vulgar acts. Like, it, it's just not the same for me. And honestly, I look at your four. I, I, I don't really think that, you know, Chappelle definitely gets vulgar. But I mean, like. I wouldn't consider they're, they're not like they're been... not they're not as vulgar as right. for sure, but they're they're not they're not clean. I, I, they're I would not feel uncomfortable friends. being at a Dave Chappelle show with my parents. I don't yeah. think I would feel uncomfortable being at an Ellen DeGeneres show with my mom. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm not too familiar with Ellen DeGeneres' uh, stand-up comedy. Uh, well, so originally that is what made her famous. She she uh, really became famous as a stand-up comedian, but I've never really heard that. Though I heard her new special and I really loved it, oh, so yeah. that's kind of where I was coming at for that pick. Her probably like her comedy before this show probably got overshadowed by all her success in the show. Exactly. Yeah, and that's I mean, what happens yeah, with a lot of these people. Yeah. Right. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, okay, so let's just quickly go around, just recap. Uh, who you drafted and uh, any honor honorable mentions you may have. Ryan, let's start with you. So I picked Jerry Seinfeld. It's the first one. Jim Gaffigan. It's the second one. Ronnie Dangerfield. The go gets no respect. Get him some respect out there. And then lastly, Monster Bronny. Uh, some honorable picks I have. I have, I have a few. Uh, Sebastian uh, Man Maniscalco. He's a very good physical com comedian. He was on the cars, the comedians with Jerry Seinfeld. Fluffy, Gabriel Iglesias. Mm. He's pretty yeah. funny. There's another. Yeah. 
I had him on my list, but he was lower because I, those were like four of my top five I got, so I'm pretty happy. And then uh, I just want to give a shout out to the late, great Robin Williams. Mm. He's a great comedian, stand-up comedian, very physical, so many accents, so many, like, he, he's great. Just shout out. Yep. Uh, Ryan, I got to say, I, I really love your board just because of Jim Gaffigan. And uh, those are some good mentions you got. And mm-hmm. uh, all right, Ryan, or Shahan, how about you go ahead and recap your draft real quick? Yeah, so I went uh, John Mulaney in the first round. I went Hassan Minaj in the second round. I went Chris Rock in the third round and Chelsea Peretti in the fourth round. So I think with my board, you know, other than Chris Rock, like like Deb was talking about, I think that you can watch this, uh, any of my comics really with anybody. I think you can take, you know, parents of the shows. I, and I think that the cool thing about it is that even though that's the case, you're still going to have a great time. They're all really, really funny. They'll have kind of different vibes to them, different sort of messages, different sort of styles of comedy. Um, you know, and, and to me, I just think that you have a very complete board. And uh, and look, I also understand that, that what I value more probably isn't going to be what other people necessarily value. But for me, when I went into this draft, I was like, I need to get two. I need to get John Mulaney. I need to get Hassan Minaj. And anything else that happens is great. So I'm I'm thrilled with what I got. Uh, some other names that I, I thought about... Uh, Trevor Noah, his his yeah. stand up is actually really good. Um, you know, I don't love him on The Daily Show, but I think his stand up is actually a lot better than sort of his delivery there. Um, you know, other people that I thought about, uh, one guy who I think is a little underrated is Patton Oswalt. You know, another mm-hmm. guy who's really gotten into to being on shows and maybe has taken away from his comedy a little, but he's really funny. Um, okay, Dev, why don't you recap real quick and give your uh, mentions? All right. So going into this draft, I really thought. I don't know that much about stand-up comedians. I'm not going to get the picks that I want. Uh, but I actually think I have the most votable for dr- draft here. I mean, everyone knows and loves Dave Chappelle and Kevin Hart. Everyone knows Ellen DeGeneres. And uh, for those that are in the know, Russell Peters really is that guy. So I think Russell Peters, especially with the people who tend to vote on our drafts, I really think this is a, this is a fun, easy win for me. So I'm pretty excited about my board. I, I got a lot of comedians I love. Uh, and I'm just going to give one shout out uh, to the person I was going to surprise everyone with, which was Pat McAfee with my last pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Why not Blake Griffin, man? <laughs> yeah, but uh, because Pat McAfee at least has his own show right now. I think Blake Griffin afterwards, you could probably do that. But Pat, Pat McAfee right now is probably the only person in that sports realm uh, yeah. other than Frank Caliendo, who's like a comedian and a a sports commentator at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dev, I think you ended up with actually a really good list. And it's funny because going into this draft, Dev was like, no, I'm just going to take an L here. Uh, but yeah, you ended up with like a really good roster. Um, obviously, I haven't seen Ellen stand up, but as a person, like seeing her shows or whatever, I really enjoy her too. And uh, just want to mention that Shahan with Chelsea Peretti, for sure, when you think of female comedians, uh, like, you know, you got Ali Wong, Whitney Cummings, they're very vulgar. So, so, you know, that you got the fact that you got Chelsea, that's a very good thing, and she's very clean. So that was good stuff. So I'll go over my uh, sad little draft here. Um, so I started out with uh, <laughs> Louis C.K., which I really enjoy. You know, uh, I love his comedy. That's it. That's all I love about Louis C.K. is his comedy. So with my board, I don't think about taking my parents out to watch these people. I'm a very selfish person. It's just for me. It's my time <laughs> when I listen to them. I couldn't. I, I definitely wouldn't bring them to any of these shows. Um, okay. So second up, I took Aziz Ansari, someone else. I really love his specials and someone I you know I listen to all the time uh, when I get a chance. So back in the day, I just kind of listened to Pandora before Spotify was a thing. So it'd give me random comedians, and that's who I put in my rotation. So that's how I found out about Dimitri Martin, and that's someone I really enjoy, so I took him to the third. And I ended up with Chris D'Elia. Um, someone else, you know, I think he's very interesting. He's pretty funny. Uh, I think I could have done better, but it is what it is. Uh, some honorable mentions, uh, Brian Regan, He's kind of in that Jim Gaffigan uh, level for me. He's just this tier below. And um, Dane Cook, that's someone I grew up listening to. Shout out to Henry Shin, who always listens to the pod. Uh, we listen to him all the time. And, uh, you know, he's not that great now when you listen to him. But that, growing up, you're like, dude, this guy's hilarious. Dane Cook had like six months where he owned the planet and then he just crawled into a <laughs> hole and it was over. Right. <laughs> Right. And I think, too, uh, I just want to mention Bill Burr. I enjoy his stuff. And he's in The Mandalorian, people. What the? What? Who, who would have seen that? And uh, Cat Williams. Very vulgar, but very <laughs> hilarious. 
Uh, I thought about taking him in the fourth, but you know, uh, that wraps up another great episode. I think we all ended up with pretty good rosters, you know, maybe not me, but thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, want to ask us anything, segment ideas, hit us up at ashishandfriends.com on Instagram at ashishandfriends on Twitter at ashishandpals. And, uh, that's about it. And until next time we're out. <laughs>